have some issues in our city, and we've got to deal with those issues. I believe that the best years of Baltimore are in front of us. I came to the city as a teenager to go to Morgan State University. I graduated with a master's degree in business. I worked in banking, I worked in private industry, and I believe that my experience in private industry, my experience as a city legislator, and my experience as a state legislator, and everything that I've done to this point has prepared me to be the greatest mayor that this city has ever had. I will work 24-7 nonstop because I believe in the future of our young people, I believe in the future of our city, and I know that when we lift the least of us, we will lift all of us. And it is about inclusiveness and working together. Thank you for allowing me to join you this evening. Thank you, Ms. Pugh. Mr. Cupid. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me this evening. Um, of course, we will all like to vote. That's why we're here. Uh, <laughs> whatever you decide, you know, I know I will stay committed. As you guys know, I'm a Baltimore Police Sergeant. I'm, a, I'm committed to continue to serve and to do my best to protect and serve in whatever, whatever capacity that I'm given. Um, I'm running for mayor because, well, we can do better. And we have been going down the wrong, the wrong road for too long. And while this is my first time running for any political office, I'm a the kind of person that's kind of bold, right? There's no mountain too high for me to climb, no ocean too, too wide for me to cross. So I'm asking for your vote, for your support, and a big thank you to all those that found me on Twitter and sent out your condolences. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cupid. Mr. Stokes. Thank you all for allowing us to come before you this evening and to speak. You know, I came back to council five years ago. Uh, amazingly, I came back as an insider, but I had to fight as if I were an outsider. I came into a situation where folks said, you know, we're going to close pools and rec centers, and I said, no, we're not. I said, we're going to figure this out. We're going to audit our books. We're going to make sure we were more efficient. And we kept most of those pools open and most of those rec centers open. I'm the guy who said, we're not going to allow a handful of billionaire developers, two of them, three of them, maybe, while everyone else paid their full share of taxes, we were going to take our tax dollars and allow them not to pay taxes for 30 years for their projects. I lost the first battle, but never again. Never again will this city see that, where we give hundreds of millions of dollars of our money while we pay our taxes and our high water bills. I beat them the second time on this matter. And I won't ignore the public safety issue. I'm sorry we didn't get to it tonight. But that's a big elephant, and we've got to talk about that. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. Ms. Emery. Thank you. Eleanor Roosevelt used to talk about leaders who light a candle instead of cursing the darkness. And we've had some dark times in Baltimore. We need to learn from them, but I want to focus on leading Baltimore to a brighter future. This is my city. It's where I grew up, and it's where I want to spend the rest of my life. And that's why I've spent my life and my career making the city better. And that's why I want to, what I want to continue to do as mayor. I want to cut the violence in the city and make us safe. I want to reform the police department so that everyone in the city is treated with respect. I want to reclaim our schools, and I want to make the city prosperous for everyone in the city. I'm a realist. I know that Baltimore faces some serious and entrenched challenges. But I also know that in our darkest times, we come together. And it's why I believe we can do things differently. I believe we can have a safe city. We can grow our economy. We can reclaim our schools. And we can have an ethical and efficient government. And I believe it because I know the capacity of the city and its people. I'm excited to be your next mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henry. Mr. Young. Thank you again for your time. If you want to learn more about me, you can find out more at electcalvinyoung.com. I encourage you to sign up for email updates because this month we will be releasing our policy papers and positions um, for the campaign. You know, my, my candidacy is, is funded not by corporate interests or big city donors. It's by, by people like, like ordinary folks like, like you guys. You know, in this last week we've had over 100 donations to my campaign because people aren't interested in, in what we've seen in the past, they're interested in a future for Baltimore that is brighter, that is that is wonderful. And you know, I had a conversation with Governor Deval Patrick last month, with the former governor of Massachusetts. He said sometimes we elect, you know, cycle to cycle in these in these politics, political games. But we need to start electing generational leaders. I'm hoping to be a generational leader for Baltimore, somebody that can be an example to the young men on our street corners 
who need somebody who need to see somebody like me and see that they can be better, that they don't have to live on the streets, that they can be somebody great. And I hope to be the next mayor for Baltimore for exactly that reason. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Young. Mr. McKenzie. We have a choice in this election between the politics as usual or the politics of change. And we know what politics as usual gets us, and it's, got, it's what got us here. And the politics of change will be the only thing that gets us out of this. When I think about the work that I've been engaged in the last 18 months and for my entire career, it's been about telling the truth in public. And the truth is that we have to do something different. The truth is that 344 murders means that we have a problem. The truth is that our schools aren't doing what they should be. The truth is that like, we have to think about issues like adult literacy and sort of runoff and public health in new and innovative ways. If you go to the website, DeRayForMail.com, you'll see that I've launched a plan that, that crosses a host of issues from arts and culture to public health uh, to safety and crime. I'm an activist, organizer, and educator with a track record of, of leading with results, and I'm excited to do that here as the next mayor of Baltimore City. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKesson. Ms. Walton. I always like to tell the audience that you might not know my name, but my organization has been working in communities across the city. I have a public policy blog that has been followed by thousands over the years. I'm well known, I'm well supported. You don't hear me in the media because I'm not an establishment pop. I'm against all of the establishment uh, master plan. We have two choices. Uh, uh, one Baltimore that looks like an international economic zone with global corporate uh, campuses and foreign rich, or we have one Baltimore that is rebuilding the Baltimore we have for our own citizens with small businesses, small manufacturing, and getting all of our citizens to work, attracting new residents to the city. Cindy Walsh for mayor, take a look at my campaign website. I have my uh, policy issues, my uh, professional background is the only one that allows such an administration of a major city. Uh, check out my Facebook page for all of my policy stances. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Mr. Gutierrez. Now more than ever, we need a mayor who can unite our city. And if you go to my Facebook page, Patrick Gutierrez for Mayor, you will see that I'm doing exactly that. All across this city, people are responding to my message that a better Baltimore begins with better day-to-day -day management of our people, our processes, and our money. Once we've established that foundation, then we can start to address all of these problems that we've talked about tonight. But it begins with an efficient, competent government. That's what I've done in my entire career all across this country including right here in Baltimore. And that's what I will do as your next mayor. Please visit abetterbaltimore.org to find out more about me and to hear my song. Yes, I have a song. And thank you very much for your time tonight. And please vote for me on April 26th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. Mr. Mosby. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be here. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be sitting on the stage uh, running for mayor of Baltimore across from you. Growing up in northeast Baltimore to a three-bedroom house with six women, watching my mother struggle on a daily basis as I shared a bedroom with her to the eighth grade, get out of bed at 4.30 a.m. to catch two buses to work. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be here. Growing up with a mother that had to teach me how to ride a bike, how to catch a football, how to apply for college is the first person in my family to go away to college. I am not supposed to be here. But I am here, Baltimore, and the reason that I am here is to connect the dots. I am the only person on the stage that understands how to connect the dots from corporate America to our street corners. How to provide young folks from all across this city real exposure and opportunity to a better tomorrow. Baltimore City, we have an opportunity and a chance now to forever change the trajectory of this city. And I implore you, I ask you, go to my website, mosbyformayor.com, read my plan. Let's build a better Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mosby. I have a hand for all of our candidates. CityExplainer.com and SouthBaltimore.com for streaming this event tonight. Thanks to NFB for being such a gracious host, and thanks to the League of Women Voters, thanks to Linda Riddleman, thanks to all of the neighborhood associations and all the people who made this event possible. Thanks to each of our candidates. 
Let's all do what we can to assure that we have the biggest voter turnout in the history of the city on April 26th. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.